I always said the, the first book, Tattoos on the Heart, kind of wrote itself. I was just kind of the chaperone. For uh, 20 years, I had kind of all these stories, um, you know, in my head, and then I was using them all the time in, my, in the probation camps and juvenile halls and jails and prisons where I would say mass. So I had them, and, and they, they all kind of got cemented and refined uh, because I had told them so often. That not only puts a human face on, on the gang member, but it also calls us to our shared humanity, that everybody is born into this world wanting the same things. Every single person, there is no difference. And, and things happen, and, and things are unfortunate, and people have luck and some people don't. Well, I guess I'm uh, surprised by the fact that it's a, a small microcosm of uh, a subset of the poor that you know a lot of people don't have access to, so I suppose I'm trying to offer access to them. You can go to a, you know, some, you know, corner of the country, you know, in Ohio or something, and they've read the book and they're touched by it, and, and they couldn't be farther from the experience of gang members in Los Angeles, and yet, and yet they, they get it, you know, they, they you know, you, people end up feeling like, well, maybe we do belong to each other, which is a nice thing to have happen. And then, you know, the book has been translated into a whole bunch of languages, which is very perplexing to me. You know, because how are they going to get this in Korea, you know, or in Lithuania, where the books have been translated into their language? So I, that's all a mystery to me, you know.